Yeah. Cool. Um, that frightened me and frightened a lot of America. What, can you talk more about knowing what bills, what's actually said in the bill indicating the problem, so that you, our elected officials actually vote for things that they know that they're intending to vote for? Well, let's talk about Obamacare for a second. The more we learn about Obamacare, and look, I've taken the approach that I'm not going to demonize and demagogue. Because if we do that too much, we could lose a little credibility. I think the bill is so bad that it speaks for itself. I think our strength is by now saying, okay, we did everything we could, including shut the government down. But now the Democrats own it. Here's, here's a fact. People all over Staten Island and Brooklyn, their doctors are being dropped from the, from the uh, coverage that they used to have. So if you had a doctor for 15 years, that doctor may no longer be in, in your plan. That's number one. Pe people's plans, as far as their companies, where they got their insurance through their company, those plans are being dropped. So now they're trying to, they're putting everyone into the exchange. Then when you get into the exchange, you find out that your co-payments and your deductibles are more than they were. So for the same type of coverage, you're paying more and getting less. Then you'll find out that even if you did sign up, and this is, I just did a press conference yesterday in Staten Island, a woman that takes a very rare drug called Solaris. It's 18,000 and change per shot. She has to get it every two weeks or she could die. It's life-threatening disease that she has. She went for her shot on a Friday. It was the 14th day. Doctor said, I'm sorry, but you don't have insurance. So what are you talking about? I have insurance. I work for Gateway Church. We've been insured. I've been coming here for all this time. No, did, did, did you change uh, you know, uh, the Affordable Care Act? Or, uh, care, uh, uh. Turns out she was frantic, and they were asking friends for credit cards to pay the $18,800 for the shot. The pastor called me. He said, Michael, I don't understand this. Not only did I send the check and fill out the paperwork, we received temporary cards that we, through the Obamacare website, all that we got received. We're supposed to be in the system. I got involved, we found out the check was never cashed, the application was never processed, and but for the fact that they prepaid the whole year with Emblem Health, and their, and their Emblem Health was paid up until April 2014, Emblem Health said since they were paid in full for their original policy, we will honor it until April while they're switching over to a But these are the things you're going to hear every single day. Seniors that have Medicare Advantage, no longer going to have Medicare Advantage because there's a massive cuts in that. Doctors, for the first time, are going to be paid for Medicare visits for, in certain instances less than Medicaid. Some of these doctors are saying that they're going to get paid $12 for a visit. Here's the problem with that. The paperwork to get reimbursed $12, their employee that has to do that paper, it costs them more than $12 to process it, so they lose money. So what's happening is doctors are saying, I'm not accepting Medicare. If you can't pay, or you don't have good insurance, I'm not gonna accept Medicare anymore. So little by little, our seniors gonna have less access to care. Little by little, if you work for a company, you got your insurance through a company, you're gonna be pushed into an exchange where the deductibles will be higher, uh, co-payments will be higher, and you may not be able to have the doctor you wanted anymore. So this idea that if you like your health care, you can keep it, we now know is absolutely not true. And the hospitals are in pain because the cuts to the hospitals are so draconian that they're probably not gonna make it through. They don't know what to do. If you if you look around, every doctor that had its own private pro a practice, one by one is leaving and joining the hospital because they can't afford to stay in business on their own. So healthcare as we know it is literally being destroyed before our eyes. And I honestly can tell you, unfortunately, as long as the president is in office, I don't see a way to change it without again trying to shut the government down and they dig their heels in. And, and unfortunately, they win when we shut the government down. I mean, the poll shows it, money dries up. I had some of my best, strongest Republican friends calling me that own big companies. Turn the government back on, turn the government back on. These are she Turning the government off, shutting the government down is bad for the economy, it's bad for the country as a whole. So we are really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because this law is dangerous, it's destroying healthcare as we know it. And healthcare is one of the biggest businesses in the entire country. So you're talking about a lot of layoffs, a lot of hospitals cutting back, a lot of nurses not having jobs, doctors closing their practices, all the all the HR staff that keeps the doctor's office going. So that's another reason why we don't see the employment growing. Because people are scared to death of this law and they're not expanding their businesses. So I think we have time for one more question. Perhaps please, please, for a motion. Thank you for having me.
Sanctions on Iran. Sanctions on Iran. Sanctions on Iran. Um, this is important, okay? This, this is not politics. This goes to the heart, seriously, of, of how dangerous this world is. Okay, Iran, first of all, they are masters at deception. They are masters at buying time. This is what they do. And they have been looking and analyzing our president's position globally. Think about it. What did we do to Poland? A staunch ally of the United States. We unilaterally pulled the rug out from them when we took a large portion of our missile defense out of Poland to appease Russia. Did we get anything from Russia for that? Absolutely not. Same thing in Israel. But what we did do, what we did do, was tell an ally that you can't count on us. What we did do is tell Russia we're not strong. That's what we did. Now you can go and look at Syria, you can look at Egypt, I can go on and on of all the missteps of this, this administration and how badly they bungled every single thing they could have done wrong, they did wrong. Egypt's a perfect example. Mubarak kept the peace for 30 years. We threw him under the bus immediately. Now I'm not saying he didn't have to be transitioned out and we could have worked with a pro-Western military to instill some order and then work and transition a new government. No, we throw him right under the bus. Again, if you're an ally of the United States, you're not watching that and saying, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm next. That's what, that's what, what they did home, what they did to Mubarak, so on and so forth. Dangerous, dangerous political policy mishaps, big time. So now, now Russia, who has a lot of economics to gain here, wants to make peace. And what they're saying is, a country that has lied to the world every single day for decades, and I, I can prove they lied, because this deal says that they're gonna take their 20% enriched uranium, and they're gonna dilute it. But here's the problem. It's, they didn't say that, they said, we never made that agreement. Well, but it's come out, they've accepted, they admitted that they have 20% uranium, that's the point, okay? But yet this whole time they've been saying our, our uranium program is for peaceful power purposes. It's for energy purposes. It's peaceful. Here's the problem with that. Any scientist in the world will tell you that you enrich uranium to 5% for power purposes, for energy. Anything above that would be going towards weapons grade. Now here's the other thing you don't read in the newspaper. 20% uranium is 80% of the way toward a nuclear bomb, 80% of the way. So they are 20% away from having nuclear capability. That's a game changer. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a game changer. These people are not rational. They will destroy nations. They, they, will, they will destroy Israel. And, and the day after they destroy Israel, they will destroy the United States if they can. If they can. So what we are doing right now, I think, is the most dangerous mistake President Barack and Obama has made of his entire presidency to allow us to back off sanctions, which we cannot. I believe the House will move for strengthening sanctions, but I don't know what will happen in the Senate and with the presidency. He has a veto power. You need two-thirds of the House and Senate to overcome it. I don't see how we do, but I am very, very, very concerned that if we do not increase sanctions now, Russia is going to be trading with, with uh, Iran, China will trade with Iran, and they will race towards nuclear capability. They will hide. They say they'll let, they'll let the inspectors in. It's nonsense. They cannot be trusted. They have lied consistently to the world. And if they want to start showing some good gestures, goodwill towards the United States, then we the Americans that are held hostage in Iran. That's where you start. And we don't negotiate with terrorists, and they are the largest terror proxies of the world. They support more terrorism than any other nation in the world. Their terror proxies are the ones blowing themselves up throughout the world. They cannot be trusted. They need to be dealt with strength. The only thing they respect is strength, and they exploit weakness. And what we are right now is very weak, because our president does not know how to deal national stage. He really believes that if that they can feel like us, if we're just more amicable, they will like us. Well, they're laughing at us. Russia is laughing at us. Our allies don't know if they can trust us anymore, and our enemies are emboldened. It's a dangerous time, 
And the only thing I can say is I actually said in my prayer, that I pray every night, for God to give me strength, courage, and wisdom to help be a part of the leadership of this country. But I also pray that Israel will be strong and do what they have to do. I'm actually depending on Israel right now to do what they have to do if Iran gets any closer to a nuclear weapon. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that yeah. Poll after poll from Fox News, MSNBC, CNN shows that the economy is our number one issue. We have one third of the American workforce that either has been unemployed, underemployed, or dropped out of the workforce. Yes. If Patty Murray and Paul Ryan can come up with a budget agreement, why can't we come up with a jobs bill? Yeah. Second thing is, since the passage of NAFTA, we have lost, let, let, let me restate that, we've given away about 8 million jobs. Look at the garment manufacturer and textile production, gone. Central America, my Levi's Blue Jeans is made in Central America. Maytag has moved their washing machine facility to Mexico. Bobby Jingle, the governor of Louisiana says, well, if a shrimper wants, a, a, a shrimp captain wants a new boat, he has to go to South Korea to get a new shrimping. Okay? When Republicans say free trade, that scares me. I am American first. I'm for fair trade, not free trade. Okay. Well, what is it alone? Okay. What next thing? Does it take us, me and you, to organize a rally, and I'm sure the unions members will back to have a rally down in Washington, D.C. for a bipartisan jobs bill on Labor Day to do this? And if yeah. you do this, maybe you'll get elected. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's, talk, um, let's talk about the jobs reality, okay? Yeah. There's a lot of things going into why jobs are not being created right now. The number one thing is, there are just way too many rules and regulations Amen. out of all these agencies. Amen. So it goes back to how do we get our agencies under control, which means regular order and budgets, and start defunding them is the only way. Let me let me give you my opinion. You can disagree with it, but this is what I'm seeing. If the agencies are out of control and they are and they are legislating through regulation, because what President Barack Obama can't get through the House, he's having the EPA and all these other groups regulate. So it's regul it's legislation through regulation. We've got to stop that number one. The only way to stop that is to start defunding these agencies and we can't do that until we have appropriations bills. That's number one because they're out of control and they don't listen to the Congress. I'm telling you they come before my committee and they say, well Congressman, we don't agree. I say, well that's the intent of the Congress and we're the Congress telling you the intent, but we don't interpret it that way. How can you tell us you don't interpret it that way? We're telling you the intent. That that is that much hubris among these agencies. So that's number one. Number two, we, we have to have a strong energy policy that they're holding back. If we had a full, true, and um, unleashed our energy resources, that would create a tremendous revenue stream that could pay for the rebuilding of the infrastructure of this country that's dilapidated, that's falling apart. Brooklyn is a perfect example. Sinkholes opening up everywhere because our infrastructure under the ground is 120 years old. So we, if, we would have, if we were to invest in our infrastructure in this country, throughout the entire nation, from East Coast to West Coast, that would create a tremendous amount of long-term jobs. And we can pay for it through energy, through, through the energy boom. The other thing is there's a massive amount of uncertainty because of Obamacare, because of Dodd-Frank, and because of the, the president keeps saying he's gonna tax the rich, tax the rich, tax the rich, tax is going up. There's a lot of uncertainty. So our corporations are, 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 have the highest amounts of cash ever. When corporations are holding cash, they're not reinvesting in their corporations and in other businesses to grow and expand, so they're not creating the jobs. Then you have the trade issues on top of all that. That's what I want to And address. I just Will went to you around. promise us to look at all these trade issues that make but let me American make workers I just went to a rally on the steps of City Hall two weeks ago, okay, and helped a rally because they want to fast track the authority to circumvent to, to give the president the power I saw to enter into more trade agreements without the Congress's consent. I saw that. Which is why I, I stand against that. Will you? Will you? Have, yes. so like I said, does it take us to organize well, a rally? I think I think you need to spread the word. I think you do need to spread the word. But the reality is, we do have to have with our trade agreements. They're not always fair. And, the re and, and we have countries like China that manipulate their currency and play other games. So, so, so the only way we fully 
restore our economy is all the things I mentioned from energy to getting our agencies under controls, lowering regulations so that they're reasonable and responsible and companies can flourish, making sure that certainty is, is brought back because there's so much uncertainty, and then our trade policies, and we can do that. And one of the things we can do with trade is bring back high-end manufacturing to the United States. Because the one problem that China and some of these countries have is energy is very expensive. So although they, although they pay their workers nothing, so they have much cheaper labor costs, we can have much cheaper energy costs, which will balance some kind of And we can make a better product, which can we can compete with the rest look of the world. Look at Chinatown, look at Midtown Manhattan. 80% before NAFTA of our apparel that we wear was made in America. Now it's down at 20. What, what about Brooklyn? You want to talk about the garment district? Brooklyn, Brooklyn Pennsylvania, Allentown, all that stuff, all that made stuff. Right will here. You will you make a promise? All these areas. Will you make a promise to us to address this? I'm going to do my very best, and that's why I went ahead and I stood up at that rally to say I will not give the president the ability to fast track these trade agreements we'll, we'll without the down, We'll come march down Labor Day. Okay. If you say so. I know I have another event, so I've got it on. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. Thank you. Jump in there fast, get in there fast.